I'm sincerely very happy to welcome you today here to the second edition of the symposia series Actors, Agents and Attendants, Social Housing, Housing the Social. We are delighted, as Fulia has already said, to um, have so many critically important, experienced and um, esteemed sociologists, philosophers, historians, artists, architects, planners, housing developers and politicians with us speaking today. And also we are equally delighted by the fact that we have an audience of participants made up of professional and um, volunteering activities and organizations that we hope you will very much contribute to our discussion. As Folio has indicated and as Sigmund Bauman explains, we believe that the crisis in social housing should not be isolated from a broader public debate about the roles we all have in the development of new forms of social work. In this context, how can we not only rethink the social in social housing, but develop practices that remake it. One of the things that was really important for us in the symposium was to bring together quite oppositional voices. We don't just want activists, we don't just want artists that work in social housing projects, we want those people, those people. We also want politicians that build social housing projects, we also want historians that know about the histories of social housing, and it was very successful in gathering all those voices together. And everybody's very, to a certain extent, people are polite with each other in these kind of events. People put on their best professional faces, of course we want them to. But at the same time, um, that it's quite important to establish a degree of antagonism, and I think that we did that. So for instance, tonight we ended up on, as I said at the end of it, let's not kind of get too high as we go out of here thinking that, for instance, the Occupy movement can solve the world, or, or that the rights to the city are all right, because I think that it was also very important particularly yesterday, that we had some very pragmatic and, and um, very uh, uh, party politically organized statements about the development on a pragmatic basis of social housing. Also, we as politicians, we are uh, organized nationally, but every intervention is internationally. Uh, every intervention is multinational, uh, just from that point of view. Uh, in my opinion, there are a lot of questions, not only to individuals, but also to uh, professionals, to politicians, to, uh, and so on. Well, the idea of the necessity of housing the social in a broader sense is under attack now. I actively feel this, uh, feel this attack, and I've conceptualized it myself as a status quo, so to speak, a normal way of doing things that is increasingly disallowing the social to be housed. It's quite a provocative political statement, but I've experienced that, for instance, in the practice of squatting. Well, it's very hard to interpret anything that's happening at the current moment, or historical conjuncture, if you prefer, uh, except in the light of the fiscal crisis and the collapse of uh, the world economies into some strange version of stagnation. And it's worth pointing out that the origin of the financial collapse was a housing crisis. Basically, the rest of the world, um, or a lot of the world, is not uh, thinking in terms of social housing. And uh, I find it inspiring to see uh, that, uh, for instance, uh, I can get inspired by the informal city of Caracas and uh, to analyze how things are done there and also, for instance, to think about uh, how a community in a depressed neighborhood of Amsterdam uh, wants to live together and to learn from them. A sense of social is sharing a conversation. And I think that has to be involving media at, at some point, in some way. And of course, it has a spatial dimension as well. Uh, but that's not where my focus is. It's a, both a social and an economic issue. Uh, it's an economic issue in the sense that there is no, uh, in, in many parts of the world now, there is no public housing sector. It's a social issue in that housing has become a commodity more than a right, and it needs to be a right more than a commodity. But we were also asking centrally what artists and architects 
position as makers was in this. Don't know what responsibility artists have. I can only speak as this artist, not as the artist in the abstract, but certainly one of the things that artists can do is to concentrate and symbolize the issues at hand by talking about them next to the subject or from behind the subject or to enfold a net around it of language or images or whatever it is that artists can bring to thinking somewhat differently about things that present themselves in very specific and literal fashion. One could see the artist as the expert par excellence of non-representation. Right? You can see artists as being completely specialized in not being well, advertisers, not being illustrators to a prefixed point, but in taking somehow the capacity to represent and taking somehow the capacity to generate meaning and lead it to unknown territories. Artists are more or less more individual, uh, but somehow they have the role to uh, give enlightenment and uh, refresh the uh, minds of the common people to understand where they are living, the world they are living. So I think um, both roles can play as bridges in Britain's state and society. It's very simple. People need art. Uh, art is not something which is maybe useful, but uh, we need, you know, like uh, like a cup of coffee. Uh, but uh, we need it uh, for our uh, to to mediate the reality we live in. Art has such a power that really transgresses all activism, philosophy, uh, and other uh, forms, and then uh, uh, it really communicates uh, with uh, uh, different lines. It's almost as if a parallel system suddenly started to develop. And I think this is what is incredibly magical. It's not a movement as it, we were taught in modernism that something will come and replace something else. In this case, that something is creating a parallel condition where we still operate in the capitalist discourse, but we are trying to generate a parallel forms of organization. Right now, uh, what is exhilarating to me is that there is a dialogue, and it's a global dialogue, and it's starting from the point that many people are dissatisfied with the current system. So I think right now my focus is how to enable that dialogue, how to make sure that we can learn from the indignados in Spain, that we know what's happening in Occupy Wall Street, and what software are they using in Greek to write a manifesto, and maybe we can use the same and we can participate. And I think there is so much innovation in technology that is helping this. Uh, academics have a particularly important role to play in this, not only because we uncover how these processes happen, but also we can figure out how to directly intervene, intervene with our institutions. So the university that I'm at has taken a very active role in trying to not just understand the processes of disinvestment, reinvestment, uneven development, but to actually address it by uh, engaging in targeted, um, targeted interventions as well as investments in particular parts of the, the city. I, I don't think we have to arrive at one new system, but I do think that at some point we will need new institutions, but I think it's going to take some time. Yeah, it somehow it's quite dangerous to stand in only one perspective. So we need a crossfire from different perspectives, and uh, finally this crossfire will be a kind of uh, reconciliation uh, from different disciplines. And I think that could be a positive solution for some crisis now. If we start with this idea that it's innegotiable that this object or this practice should be seen solely in terms of financial gain or financial value or any other applied value in society. If you just start with emphasizing that, that it's irreductible, that you can't reduce it to that, then you have a starting point for change. Uh, I think it's uh, very important to do something, not just to talk. And uh, when you do something, you, uh, you have uh, what I call a relational object, uh, where a community uh, can use it as a tool to change their culture of living. So you have to have an object, you have to do something together, and this object is a tool to change the culture of living. A set of questions that came up continuously about what role and position one could play as a citizen, an actor, within scenarios of transformation of social housing. Uh, we had a series of questions about artists' role within it, what artists can do. Martha Rosler suggested that actually the, uh, an artist's role is always to do with providing symbolic 
value and using the symbolic power of art to change ideas. The other question was at what level we think about um, housing in relationship to making of the social. Do we um, recognize that uh, it's important to go ahead and start developing new forms of social housing using the current models, or do we actually understand the problem of social housing as connected into a web of um, capital development that needs to be destroyed in order to reformulate new things? I no longer feel like I am post something. I feel like I am pre-something. And that, that, that feeling, you know, is what is driving all of us.